Live in Western Oregon, this is NBC 16 News at 530. You know, we don't have any credit, so we would, we would literally have zero dollars in like a week. Nearly 334,000 Oregonians have filed for unemployment since Governor Brown started placing restrictions. Good evening and thanks for joining us for NBC 16 at 530. I'm Alan Matthews. Since then, the Oregon Employment Department says it's hired hundreds of staff members to take calls. It's also opening another contact center and increasing callbacks in the evening. But Oregonians are still facing glitches during the filing process and are having difficulty getting through to the unemployment office. The OED has an old computer system dating back to the 1990s. Like other states, Oregon was given $86 million from the feds in 2009 to update the system. OED says most of that money is still untouched, but says a team was hired a few years ago to start planning for modernization. Uh, of course, it's been a little bit disrupted right now on the modernization side just because a lot of the people who understand what it takes to modernize our current system also have some deep knowledge of the unemployment insurance system and so can also be of a tremendous immediate help to all Oregonians. OED says the average wait time for a check is about three weeks. A Junction City resident says he's been trying to file since the end of March. He says OED finally received the claim two weeks ago. Now he's waiting for the check. Uh, but at least now it says that my initial claim has been received. So it's not just, you know, a generic no claim on file. OED says that for those who have filed the claim, the status of the claim will not be available until it has been processed. OED also says despite problems filing or getting a hold of a representative, you will receive benefits retroactively from your eligibility date. For a tutorial on how to file and answers to common questions, visit our website at NBC16.com. National Frozen Foods Corporation in Albany remains closed as they continue to work with health officials to reopen. The plant shut down last week after 80 employees and two family members tested positive for coronavirus. All 270 workers continue to stay at home as they await next steps from management. The facility went through cleaning over the weekend. Both the Lynn County Health Department, OSHA and the Plants Council are currently in talks to make sure that their health standards are up to code. While the company hasn't commented, the local Teamsters Union representative says talks are set to happen about how to safely get back into business. Eight cases out of 270, it's a terrible number and, and hopefully the end of it, but it isn't a Smithfield or a Tyson. As of late, obviously, they're doing what we wanted, which was a, a thorough deep clean. OSHA is investigating the facility and it's unclear how long the inspection will take before they reach a decision, but the plant can reopen whenever they want since they closed themselves. You can stick with NBC 16 as we continue to bring you updates on this ongoing situation. Lane County Public Health announced the criteria the county needs to meet before social restrictions can be relaxed. According to Lane County Senior Public Health Officer Dr. Patrick Ludke, first the county needs to see a falling number of cases. Testing must be increased. The county must have adequate contacting, tracing resources and personal protection. And hospitals must be prepared for a second wave of cases. Public health officials say they are working on a blueprint for precautionary measures the community needs to follow. Ludke also stressed the importance of having a plan in, line, in alignment between the counties and the state. It would be one thing again for us to be lucky and have um, a massive decrease in cases or perhaps no new cases, but be surrounded by other counties that are having significant outbreaks. And eventually those cases would come to us um, given the amount of commerce that we have. Dr. Ludke says he believes Lane County will see a falling number of cases in the next few weeks and believes Lane County has adequate contact tracing and PPE. Local labs are completing around 500 tests a day, but Dr. Ludke says he wants that number to double. We now turn to the map of the latest coronavirus numbers in the state of Oregon. Despite adding another 43 cases, making that more than 2,300 cases in Oregon, this is the fifth day in a row that cases have decreased. Only 554 of those cases are people who are hospitalized. While the state added another death, bringing that number to 92, Oregon is still in good shape with overall hospital capacity. According to OHA, Oregon is running about 9,000 tests a week as it is plan working on plans to increase testing capacity.
Turning to our region, Benton County has 29 cases. Lynn County added another five cases. That total is now 79. Here in Lane County, we remain at 50 cases for the fourth day now. A total of 25 people have recovered and one or no one rather is hospitalized. Deschutes County has 75 cases. Douglas County stands at 23. Cases in Coos County have jumped to 15 as coronavirus continues to spread at the Shutter Creek Correctional Institute. 13 inmates and two staff members members have tested positive. Colorado and Nevada are joining a West Coast pack to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Oregon Governor Kate Brown, Washington Governor Jay Inslee, and the Governor of California joined forces two weeks ago, and now governors in Colorado and Nevada are on board. The pack follows three main principles. Health comes first, no political influence, and states must work together. Since the coronavirus pandemic started, Eugene police said that they would let homeless camps stay where they are instead of ticketing or removing them. However, officers tell us that they had to relocate two camps since the stay at home order went into effect. A camp at Monroe Park and one on 7th and Garfield were relocated due to health and safety concerns. Eugene police say people camping would need to display criminal behavior or pose a significant health and safety issue that outweighs the need for the individuals to stay in that place. Clearing encampments can cause people to disperse throughout the community and break connections with service providers who are out there trying to help them with the needs that they're having, and that increases the chances for disease to spread. According to police, additionally, they are adjusting how they respond to calls to decrease the chance of exposure to COVID-19. This includes screening questions from dispatch, wearing PPE when necessary, and handling calls over the phone when possible. LTD adjusted schedules by adding more routes for their MX buses today to meet social distancing requirements. LTD limits 40 foot buses to 15 people on board and 60 foot buses to 20. LTD says the new routes should allow them to follow the rules while also serving more people. Well, LTD's job is to take people where they want to go and where they need to go. And certainly now more than ever, you know, we want to be part of the solution for those essential workers to take those essential trips and also for people in the community who need to get to groceries and doctor's appointments and to take care of their uh, neighbors and friends and family members. All passengers must cover their nose and mouth with a bandana, mask or other equivalent item while riding. The coronavirus pandemic has not been kind to local nonprofits trying to serve Lane County in tough times, and that list includes the Salvation Army. NBC 16's Tom Adams takes a look at how the agency is staying afloat during this pandemic. Tom? Well, Alan, in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Salvation Army is still serving the homeless, serving the hungry, and those in dire need. But officials are having to do all this work with fewer resources at their disposal. Hard times are mounting in the midst of an unprecedented medical emergency, and hungry families in Lane County are looking for some help at the Salvation Army. They just heard that they can come, they don't know how to work the system, but they heard they can get some food, and so they're coming down. Major Kevin Hansen says for many of the families, it's their first time looking for food assistance. And they've never had help from the Salvation Army ever, and, they're, and we're um, able to provide them with the uh, a food box that will last about a week. Food boxes are really the lifeblood of the social programs for the Salvation Army. And Major Hansen says he's noticed a 30% increase in requests for food boxes since the pandemic started. This past month, Salvation Army volunteers have put together food boxes for 1,600 Lane County households. The agency also provides utility bill assistance. All this under shrinking contributions. There's been a little decrease in donations and that's understandable because a lot of people are hurting uh, and uh, you know we're here to help those that are hurting. Lack of customers forced the Salvation Army to close its West Eugene retail store last summer. This spring and summer, Hansen has an anticipated donation shortfall of $100,000. He's hoping for some help now from the community. $30 donation will help us feed a family of four for a week. Uh, so we're hoping that we can uh, continue doing the service that we're providing. Other agency programs for seniors and for youth are on hold until this pandemic starts to loosen its grip. Reporting near downtown Eugene, I'm Tom Adams. If a financial contribution is not possible, food donations certainly are. The Boy Scouts Regional Headquarters on Martin Luther King Boulevard in Eugene has special barrels set up for food donations, all of it going to the Salvation Army. 
All right, well, thanks a lot, Tom, and I guess uh, we're going to continue on here. And uh, when we are not on the air, you can still keep up with us. You can visit our website at NBC16.com, our Facebook page at KMTR News, and download our app KMTR News on, our, on your mobile app.